Okay, welcome everybody in the room and on Zoom. Um, first, I'd like to confirm that we've posted this agenda in three public places and on the website and emailed interested parties. So we've, um, we're conforming with the open meeting law. So we'll um, open up this February 26th. Um, starting off with the pre-town um, bond informational meeting and um, for the town of Rochester. And um, welcome everybody. There's, um, I guess we'll open this up. You guys have all have got the reports in the in the mail and have studied them in detail. Detail. Yeah. And um, who's got the first question? All right, that was easy. So. <laughs> <laughs> bond motion be adjourned. <laughs> this, this is on the bond. Um, this both. Is, both. Oh. It's the pre-town meeting, and the, since the bond is um, a big chunk of what we're presenting, we figured we'd um, answer questions about that also, yeah. which we so talked the, about a lot last uh, meeting about that. So the bond is not to replace the existing bridge? The bond is to pay for the existing bridge. The one that we re we we've replaced. Already replaced. When's the last time already you've been out 73? Already replaced. We've right. already replaced. Yeah. It's done. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. well, that's it. I, I was just... This is to finish we, paying we put the it. We yeah. put the bridge before the horse oh. <laughs> kind of yeah. thing because we were in a bind with the funding. Yeah. So we would have lost 775000 in funding if we didn't yeah. I know, go forward. I don't have it in, in front of me. Um, it's on page uh, five. Okay. There's the article. I have trouble counting it too. I hope there's page numbers on the bottom. Yeah, there are those. You I want turned on those. Article 14. <laughs> you want me to read that out, Article 14, just so people know what we're talking about? Yeah. <laughs> Shall, this is great, we're starting with the last one. I like that. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> well. So the, shall general obligation notes or bonds of the town of Rochester in an amount not to exceed $359,243.00 payable from the town's general fund derived from the taxation of real property for a period not to exceed 30 years and subject to reduction by available grants and aid or other funding sources be issued to finance the cost of removing and replacing the existing West Hill TH37 bridge, which is a bridge on a modified alignment and associated roadway and channel work together being called the project. So that's what I meant is the articles say should the bond be raised to remove the existing bridge. Removal and replacing the existing bridge. Right. The existing bridge. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Are we raising the money to remove the existing bridge? No, it no. was existing last year. Yeah. You mean the previously <laughs> previously? Previous yes, sir. Right. That, that's what go. I'm asking. Let's see, I need someone. It's a relevant question. It yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a valid question. You don't you don't want to move the remove the existing. <laughs> no, no, we like that certainly one. Do not. Okay. Um, there is a timeline here too, if anybody's interested. This this bridge has been in works since April of 2019. Um, and it's been delayed and delayed and delayed and we finally got to do the project or accepted doing the project in 23 and um, we really didn't have an exact number that's why we waited to bond because we weren't sure of what funding the state had also promised us some more funding but it did materialize due to the flooding this year this summer so um, we weren't able to secure any more funding that's why we held off on bonding this before we did the project basically so we could basically edit article 14 by removing the word existing um, but can you 
I know, because he, the bond Can you council change the wording? Not until the town meeting. We can't do it till town meeting, right? Well, I, well I, 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 as long as, if, if no one else is confused. Well, if they bring but, it you up. Know, I'm, I'm pretty weak-minded, so maybe no one else <laughs> is confused. Just keep us honest. You know. <laughs> yeah, just check no, that's the bond council Well, the bond council wrote up right, they this wrote whole the thing, article. and he, he wrote it and wrote it knowing that we've already replaced it. So yeah. I don't know why he chose those words, but... Yeah. Um, I could I could certainly reach out and find yeah, out. I, I, you know, I would just say the cost of removal and replacement of the West Hill Road Bridge. Yeah, I, I, my yeah. only concern would be that it, it would affect the the uh, the legality of the warning mm -hmm. and the yep. time period of the warning. So I mean, if nobody else cares, I, I, I just was asking the question. This mm -hmm. is recorded, Clary. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Some of this, the amount of money came about, didn't you think that the Forest Service was going to pay for the bulk of it? We did. Even though they did pay a lot of it? They paid a lot of it. We, yeah. We, at one point we thought we were maybe going to get off. Initially we thought we were 100% covered. Yeah. Um, we would only have to put in a little bit for extra tar. Right. Um, exactly. But during that period of time, um, COVID hit and the prices of steel and everything went th through the roof. So the bids were coming in at 30% more than what was originally anticipated just two years before. The original cost estimate was done in the, I forget what the timeline is on it, but it was like 2020 maybe. I think the original design, and they were looking at like six hundred and fifty thousand, and we'd secured seven hundred and seventy-five for the project. But all the bids came in; they were anywhere from uh, one point almost nine million to um, the one point two million that we accepted, and we got um, that was awarded to. Al St. Ange Contractors Inc. And they, we went through their uh, bid and they dropped their bid a hundred thousand for, we took on some of that uh, testing of the compaction at the site and saved probably about $70,000 I think from that well, bid. I don't have any questions about the funding. Yeah. And the, the, the bond, the money, if the if this article were to pass, is to pay back your temporary financing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The bond anticipation. So we could um, run it by. You Jim could. You Jim Barlow. You could check with the council check. whether you uh, should play with the word. Yeah. 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 Or not. We'll put pre in front of it. Pre-existing. Previously existing. Previously existing. Pre-existing bridge. <laughs> yeah. New letters. We're not tearing down this new one, though. No. 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 I don't. It's solid. Yeah. Right. It's probably good for a couple of years. Yeah. I hope so. All right. Um, any other questions on the, the bond vote, wording, what it's for? How about um, we'll just work our way backwards since we started at the end. Um, the, um, we're asking if the voters will approve the transfer of $8,000 from the revolving loan fund to the general fund. And um, this is a fund that dates back, we think, to the 60s maybe. That was, who knows where it came from, but is over the years money has been pulled in and out of that fund to benefit townspeople and also to finance some um, things for the town, even like a truck. So I think it's... Um, Thank you to Larry and Nancy for doing some research, <laughs> yeah. historical research on that. So that's what the scoop is there. So this is to cover a shortfall? This is just to put the balance, trying to keep the budget to as minimal of an increase as possible. So. Shortfall or just just the whole whole collage of putting the budget together. How much is in that funding? 
That's it. $8,000. Oh, that's it. Okay. <laughs> it was the very last thing that we worked on. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. And we grabbed it. Um, you haven't yet. Not yet, right. Not yeah. until the voters <laughs> approve it, right. Um, Article 12 right. is asking that the voters will approve to transfer 10000 from the cemetery reserve account to the general fund to offset cemetery budget expenses. That's pretty um, clear cut, I think. And um, do you want to know why we did that? Sure. Why don't you tell us? That ten thousand represented. It it took away ten thousand from what we were asking the town. Right. For the for um, maintaining the cemeteries in fiscal twenty five. And we had that account there. And when we were looking for money, like with the revolving loan fund, we thought we could use that money, but we do have to ask the voters if we can move it out of the fund into budget. And so $10,000 is, is how much in the tax rate and penny? Oh. It's about a penny. Yeah. About a penny. Yeah. Plus oh, the uh, you the cemetery fund was not getting any allotment from the trustees. That's correct. Does it liquidate the? Mm -hmm. the it's the, not liquidated. It so there's be. still a reserve fund of some amount. Well, we have we have money with the trustees. No, but the reserve. But they fund. were not going to give us any. But then we do have this other fund, and there still is some money in it. There will be money it's left in it. It's in the report in the reserve. You should know that. <laughs> All right, so Article 11 is asking the voters to approve another $8,000 amount to transfer from the reappraisal reserve fund to the general fund for reducing the taxes for the coming fiscal year. And uh, we are in line to get a townwide reappraisal in the next couple years, and we've got a, um, a, a bid on that, uh, a price on that, and the money that we have, um, some money is given by the state every year to the town to help work towards uh, the cost of reappraisal, and then the town has also been matching that, and this $8,000 would be some of the money that the town has put into the fund when we have more than we need to, to pay for that reappraisal. So we figured we could take some of that back. And the contract for the, re, the for that reappraisal that, is, is like happening, that. right? Yes. 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 Yeah. So you're, you're confident that the contract you I have I think it's is, we are 94,000, is we, that yeah. We signed we it already. Signed. Locked in. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. We're locked in. Yeah. Yeah. Ninety-five. Ninety-something. Right. 90 <clears throat> Article um, 10 is um, asking the voters to appropriate, and here is, there is one mistake in here that says $20,400, but that got transferred over from a previous, um, the actual amount is $21,420. So no. that's something we'll have to make a note of at the at the meeting because it's already in print too. And that is funding the North Star rubbish removal um, recycling program um, from July first, twenty twenty four to June thirty, twenty twenty five. And Article Nine, we have um, a whole list of appropriations for. Um, other community agencies, including Central Vermont Council on Aging, the Clara Mar. Do you want the amounts? I mean, everyone's got their books, so they probably know these amounts. I'm just giving a summary of what we're talking about here. We've got Green Up Vermont, Orange County Parent Child Center, Quintown Senior Center, Safe Line Incorporated, Tri Valley Transport, which is formerly Stagecoach, Vermont Rural Fire Hydrant Program. Vermont Visiting Nurse Association, White River Partnership, and um, Atria, um, which is um, used to be Women Safe. And that totals up to $22,840. That 
these organizations have petitioned the town to, to support. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, what about the Park House? Park House, is that on this one? Park House. No. 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 no, no, the Park House is tax exempt, tax exempt. but that's, that's what the town the, gives them. The town doesn't, oh, I see, but they, get the tax. Tax. they don't have to pay taxes. But there's, no, there's no, every five years yeah. or so. Yeah, that's yeah. a five year. These are agencies that have requested monies of the town. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, has, has there ever, just as long as uh, yeah. I mentioned it, it has, has there ever been discussion uh, of any further support of the park house? I was wondering. Further support other than um, paying um, their taxes and paying the their taxes. taxes. We just say No, that seems like they've never brothers. approached us for no. support. Mm -hmm. The other We're towns, the other, by these. other towns, Pittsfield, Stockbridge, Granville, and Hancock. Um, have an arrangement with Park House, and you'll see in their town reports that there's amount of an amount of money that has been negotiated with them. Mm. It's not very much. Mm -hmm. I think it's like three thousand dollars. Four hundred from some towns, six hundred from other towns. Mm -hmm. It's not a, lot. not a lot. Okay. Thank you. Good question. Um, <clears throat> Article 8 is asking if the town will give the select board general authority to enter into tax stabilization contracts with owners, leases, um, baileys, or operators of commercial or industrial property pursuant to 24 VSA 2741B1. That's the, um, I guess, the, um, the code that, the statute that gives permission to do that. And, and what is the gist of requesting this the gist of requesting, this the gist of requesting <laughs> that? This is giving the town the, um, the, the vehicle to, it doesn't in, initially do anything, but it gives the town the authority to offer someone um, uh, tax stabilization for you know, development or, or, a, or an investment in, in developing and in, in, in Housing is a big issue here, so there's... So this is an authority that you did not previously have? We did not, no, you have to enact this, this permission. The, the voters have to give the town this permission to do that kind of thing. Is this what we did when AI we was... We were talking about it. And AI was applying for um, a, a program, I don't know if it's exactly the same thing. They were... Um, that was more of a loan program that they were applying for through the town and Not money good. would come from the state through the mm -hmm. town to help them out in a hard time and then they would pay it back to the town and then it would stay in the town as a revolving fund. And that to, was that whole thing with how we got that property. Yeah, yeah. Something that was complicated. They, they ended up not being um, eligible for that program because they paid their workers too much. Go figure. Yeah. So, <laughs> but, wow. Yeah. So this is basically just um, giving the town a, a tool, and not not directing it to use it in any way. That would um, that would um, come up on a case by case basis. I is this something that stays in effect year after year, or do we think, have to put it in here every year? I, I think it's something that stays in effect. It's like a, adopting a, an ordinance or a policy. Yeah. Article 7 is asking the voters to approve to transfer any remaining fiscal year 24 recreation department budgeted funds into the recreation reserve fund. This is basically um, in support of the recreation department trying to build up a pot of money to do some needed repairs on the skate space, I believe, right? Primarily. 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 But instead of um, them, if they don't use all their money in a year, it would go back into the general fund this way. It, it builds up a, a, right. a pot it's of gold to, to use. Also include the tennis courts as well, right? That's recreation. Yeah, yeah it would. Yeah. Yeah. We have a question on Zoom, I believe. Yep. Um, Robert, you have your hand raised. It's yeah. actually uh, it's uh, I, with uh, that you just asked. Um, is, this, is this just a one-time deal, or they're asking for it in in the continue to be continued in the future? 
Is it uh, the, the, the recreation department? Yes. It says only the fiscal year 24, but are they asking for it in perpetuity? I think this has to be asked every year. I think that's something that needs to be made clear at the town meeting. Okay. Fiscal year 24. Yep. Okay. And that is um, very similar to the Article 6, asking the voters to approve the transfer of any remaining fiscal year 24 fire department budgeted funds to the fire department equipment reserve fund. Basically the same same deal. Um, any money that's left over from the fire department to roll over into their equipment reserve fund. And so it's a, yeah. Might, we may want to explain why that happens. Um, a lot of times in the fire department's issues, they have uh, supply chain issues where it affects their budget. If they budget for a certain item, sometimes they can't get it before the year is up and the budget is gone. So those funds, if they're transferred to the reserve fund, at least gives them the ability to pick up the, the product that they need. Is, am I right about that, Terry? Am, yeah. am I explaining it? A lot of year and stuff sometimes it takes. Fire holes, I mean. Yeah, it's back ordered or you can't get it or uniforms. Sometimes you and, wait eight months to get the stuff. And it just doesn't come on time and it's between budget cycles. So it, it just makes more sense to have it transferred to right. the reserve. We ordered some pants, took a year and a half, you know. <laughs> All right. Um, Article five is asking if the voters will uh, appropriate fifty thousand seven hundred eighty nine dollars and forty eight cents towards operating expenses of the Rochester Public Library. And that is was that level funded? Mm -hmm. no. no, that went up a little bit. Didn't they it? increased you. Yeah. yeah. No. Any questions on that? In there. Nope. Nope. Okay, now we get to the bigger numbers. Article 4 is shall the voters authorize total highway and general fund expenditures of $1,386,286, of which $1,013,384 shall be raised by taxes. So the difference between those two numbers obviously is the, the monies that we get from the state and, and grants and such. Nancy? That figure from North Star, mm -hmm. which wasn't correct on the warning, is included in the budget correctly. Yeah. No. Just not on the warning. Just not on the warning. Okay. It's just incorrect on the warning. All right. That's good to know. <coughs> yeah. Um, did you, did you see? Okay. Um, article. Article 3 is asking the voters to authorize payment of real and personal property taxes in four installments with due dates being Thursday, August 15th, 2024, Friday, November 15th, 2024, Monday, February 17th, 2025, and Thursday, May 15th, 2025, by physical delivery to tax collector before 4 p.m. on those dates with postmarks not accepted as proof of delivery. That's um. How long has it been that we've had those particular um, requirements that uh, postmarks are not? Oh, long okay. time, right? Oh, twenty-five years probably. Twenty-five uh, years. What's yeah. the purpose of it? To make Get it easier taxes. on people. It could be longer than that, isn't it? Well, I'd say it's been here ever since I can remember. The yeah. purpose is a cutoff. So they have a definitive line. And so if somebody's late with their payments, there's no gray area. They can't say they mailed it that day and right. it arrives five days later, so it's not late because I mailed it before the due date. They have to have it received by 4 p.m. It has to be here or there. And mm -hmm. so they have to have it that way or else <laughs> it's just... Um, you know, personality. Yeah. And it was e originally set up so that it was easier for people to to make four payments rather than two. Yeah. 
Yeah. We've been at four payments for a number of years. Yeah. Probably 25 yeah. years. I'd say. All right, so Article 2 is um, to elect all town officers required by law. The first being um, a select board member for a three year term. And Pat, it's her turn to be up. Are you going to do it again? Or would you be willing to do it again if, if people nominated. vote? You? If nominated. If nominated. If nominated, I would accept. Yeah. All right. And um, we also have um, um, to elect a lister for a three year term. Do we know who is? Likely to be Jessica's up for re-election. Jessica's up for re-election. Okay. Um, we're going to elect a collector of delinquent taxes. That's a one-year term, and that's for them. Becky. Becky. How is she comp uh, compensated? Is she percentage of the delinquent taxes that she collects? Okay. Are Are they higher right now than than they've been in the past? Years past. I saw the total was up. Even towards a hundred thousand, eighty-nine. Is that a normal rate for us to carry, or is it? It has been for last couple of years, at least. Um, so when we budget, we have to budget for a percentage. That's not going to be. Mm, no, we budget on the. Um, <laughs> you can't use it. The taxes, and then we um, <laughs> then we see what happens. We're not allowed to even. Um, budget include in our calculations um, past delinquent taxes that we're hoping to get and you just can't count on that. So when they do show up it actually helps to offset other fluctuations in the budget. Is, is, there, is there a monetary or chronological deadline for where you you finally go, hey neighbor, I hate to say this, but... Oh yeah. Yeah. What is that point? There's a, there's a structure in place. Well, first of all, the, the delinquent tax collector, it would be upon her advice. Mm -hmm. on um, If her efforts are fruitless, then she would recommend. But I believe that you have to be in the second year of delinquency before you can start the process of uh, tax sale. Only two years. I believe so. I think you're and the legislature is involved with it now. Mm -hmm. And then if someone does redeem your taxes for you at that tax sale, there's another year that you still have to redeem your own taxes to keep your property back. Um, with interest. We all know it's hard to work your way out of a whole lot. Yeah. So there's an extra year for them to, you know, redeem their property. Historically, how long does this has the town waited before uh, contemplating? Um, there's there's right people now. in the books there that are four years or more. Yes, I know. I, know. Um, I think we're more than lenient. I noticed up in Hancock no, is one that's 20 years. No, I'm not saying that in just. It's just, you know, you try to work with people as much as you can. Absolutely. Because that's just the way it is. Yeah. I think we offer payment schedules and all that I mean it's like anything you you know if you make an effort nobody goes at you but if you don't make an effort then it's another issue we currently have three properties that are going towards a tax sale situation mm -hmm. in this little town three yeah that seems is that high for us some people are repeat offenders okay but then they redeem themselves at the last minute. So sometimes it's just a cycle. All right. Um, and, uh, we also are going to elect a library trustee for a five-year term. Who's up for election in that? Mm -hmm. Barry is. Barry is. Oh, library. I'm sorry. Library. Yeah. And um, also elect a trustee of public funds for a three-year term, which is Barb, Barb DeHart, is up for it. Um, and to elect a cemetery commissioner for a five-year term. Who is that? That's me. That's you. All right. You're going to up yourself? You want to do it again? Yes. yes. She just told me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there's on another page. Yeah, there's another page. Oh, right. geez, I thought we jumped right to it. And this one here. This is that. Article 15. Article 15. Okay. Um, 
shall the town adopt the following declaration of inclusion and the town of Rochester has been asked to condemn racism and welcome all persons regardless of race, color, religion, national origin, sex, sexual orientation, gender identity and expression, age, disability or social economic status and wants everyone to feel safe and welcome in our community as a town. We formally condemn all discrimination in all its forms, commit to fair and equal treatment of everyone in our community and will strive to ensure all our actions, policies, and operating procedures reflect this commitment. The town of Rochester has and will continue to be a place where individuals can live freely and express their opinions. So this was, the town was approached with this, um, this declaration of inclusion by a, a, a group of people that have been uh, moving through the state. I don't know how many towns they say have signed on with this. It's 130 or something. 130 like that, or something. It's um, basically, it's, um, we have one edit we wanted to put on there is that to, would. Um, We'll strive to ensure all our actions, policies, and operating procedures from this day forward to reflect this commitment. We wanted oh, to um, <laughs> want to be careful not to um, get in a position where we have to um, start digging in the past and trying to rework historical um, reality and just um, embrace this. So that basically, we said we'd. A lot of towns just adopt it, the select board adopts it. We decided this would be something to bring to the town as a whole to, to talk. And the state of Vermont has, has also adopted this. Um, Governor Scott has adopted this on behalf of the state. So it could be considered a little redundant to have it done town by town. But we're being approached pretty consistently by this group. So we yeah, put it before the town. I, I, just, I just have a small comment I want to say I totally support the spirit of this okay. but this is America I thought that's the way it was well that's well, why we're putting it before the town we because we totally it. agree with you <laughs> and you we're, not, stand we're, not exactly, that. We're, we're not exactly sure what's down the road after you do this declaration so we, we just want the town's people to be aware and make the decision on their own I'm, yeah. I'm glad we're highlighting it, because yeah. I guess everyone's not on the same page yeah. Doing the, the insertion from this time forward is going to be after the words and will strive from this time forward? Yes. Thank you. I believe. Um, and um, the lawyers and have said there's no liability to the select board. Could that come back and bite us in it? Well, we asked that question um, several different ways, and it seems um, not this is the one um, recommendation that we, we had that it would be good to at least have this be moving forward and not Absolutely. not not have it you know retroactive right not exactly. have to go digging through the files to change wording on stuff to, so that's, so if somebody has a perceived uh, perceived some kind of bias then there's I, I what yeah and and well there's <laughs> yeah, we I'll talk about it but I mean this is really um, in in my mind pretty redundant I mean we all have um, you know, really, you know, as, as town, you know, representatives who really strive to be ethical and, and avoid conflict of interest and, and, and do the right thing and not, not um, discriminate against anyone. So um, that's... You know. We agree with you. Yeah. <laughs> so that's... Um, Nancy. Yes. That goes right along. Well, what goes along with that is this new bill in the legislature on municipal ethics, which could preempt local authority. Um, this has just come out in the Recently. last week. Right. And this could have all kinds of impact on particularly small towns when they could. Um, require anyone who's either elected or appointed to attend ethics training, um, require municipalities to appoint an ethics officer, um, 
anyhow, we, we, we do have a conflict of interest policy, um, which VLCT put it out and the select board did um, approve it. And VLCT is working very closely with the towns and feels that this bill should not be passed in the legislature. So anybody would like to write to one of our legislators. It's interesting that the people that are on the committee, there's nobody from Windsor County um, on the committee. And our representative, our, our senator is in Addison County. She, and, but we don't have any representation over here. Could I just go back to the um, the Article 15? So uh, I, I don't have my glasses. I can't read the words. Okay. Okay. Not mine. No. Um, so are you, is some are you set, suggesting that you're going to propose an amendment from the floor That's what I to, to the article? To. Yes. To we'll insert have to, the the yeah, wording you're that word you discussed since we've just modified. So it's not yeah. written here yeah. as your correct. Right. So correct. You, somebody is going to propose yeah. an amendment. Yeah. Okay. Because if if it is adopted, we don't want to have to go back. Right. But that amendment may or may not be adopted. That that's correct. Right. Yeah. But yeah. if it is adopted, we want to make sure those words are in there so it's not a financial burden. You're going to you're going to you're going to propose that it's adopted. And you're going to advocate um, for its adoption make of the amendment. Right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. We're going <laughs> to. You're going to gonna be there to make sure we do it right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You better be there to make sure we do it right. Yeah. That's sit a good down front. Front. <laughs> You got to sit down front. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, I'm right now, what you're supposed to say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Get the coffee. <laughs> And then we're going to transact any other legal and proper business to be brought before town meeting. Any um, any other issues that people would like to bring up, question, talk about? All right, then I'd move to close this pre-town um, and bond informational meeting and open up the regular select board meeting. I right. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you all for coming. You can stay for the <laughs> more. Um, so, got that. Um, we're going to start with the prior meeting of February 12th minutes, mm -hmm. which looks um, looks like they caught everything to me. Very so conclusive. I'd move to approve. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, we've got um, any guests here that on Zoom or in the room that have got something they want to bring to the bring to the conversation? Yep. We have a dog leash issue that I've been trying to deal with. Yep. Um, I live up on Quarry Hill, mm -hmm. and I have a woman who has a dog that is not on a leash, and the dog is nipping at my children. There's other issues also up there. But I've been told that this is not a town issue. Well, it's um, it is and it isn't. I mean, the extent to which we can enforce it, I, we, I, we're aware of that situation, and we're next step. We were going to send her a copy of the town ordinance. You sent it already. And we sent yeah. it already. I did. Yeah. yeah. Friday it was sent out certified. Friday it was sent ways, out. And we sent it certified and regular mail. Yeah. So we've had um, our town animal officer up there to talk with her in the past, and that has escalated into um, threats of lawsuits and what have you. And it's it's um, it's a mess. Yeah, it's a mess. But it's it's definitely a, a well, danger. My oldest daughter was bit. Yeah. In this town before we were on the board, mm. was told that this town couldn't do nothing then too. So I hope we can get this matter taken care of. Have you involved the property owner? I have. And so do you have a, a site lease when you move there? Or? Yes, I do. Okay. 
because I believe in the site lease it does state that um, animals are supposed to be under control. So if everybody has that in so their site lease. It's, it's funny when I say that because after I spoke to you guys that day, I went back home, that dog ran him out of my car the whole time, mm -hmm. okay? And I asked her to get control of her dog. It did nothing but come around and nip the sides of my car. I have pictures because I stopped yeah, that no, road. Absolutely. So I have a camera right here mm -hmm. with those pictures. Yeah. I have a cell phone full of pictures of what this woman is doing with these animals and it's not right. So you're also trying to remedy the situation with... There's with, horses up there that ain't got no water. With, with Brian McFarland as well. No. No. no, nothing to do with Brian. This is m my safety for my children mm -hmm. and my, my wife and my, myself. But he owns the land that you're living on. And he and, holds the lease that you have. And that has nothing to do with it now because so far, from what I understand, he can't do nothing with this woman. He can't talk to her. He can't do nothing. Oh, that's where the problem lies, I guess. So it is in Rochester, the town of Rochester. These dogs are not on a leash on the property. They're not on a leash off the property, which is on a town road. There is a leash law. And that's there is a leash I have. Yeah, there is a leash law. There's also a defecation law. The dog yeah. is off that the dog is pooping yeah. in other people's properties. That's also illegal for that dog. It's going into houses and taking trash out of people's houses. Mm -hmm. Okay? That dog took my kid's hat and went and chewed it up. Took a stuffed animal, went and chewed it up. You're telling me you cannot make sure this woman puts that dog on a leash. Because it's private property. <laughs> it's the town of Rochester. But she's off. Don't it's tell me it's private here. property. It's the town of Rochester. Yeah. It's interesting. So it's not it's on her property. Yeah, can he, yeah. Why can't you go up there? Exactly. She yeah. has a section. It says on a leash. Everything else. Mm -hmm. Once she pulls off her property, it's you got to be on a leash or under control, 100% of the time. It's obviously not under control. It chased my kids soul. down a sledding path, mm -hmm. court nipping at my children. Oh, I, I recognize the issue. It's Rochester. It's still the town. It's no different than being in Harvey's development and a dog nipping at somebody. It's still Rochester, mm -hmm. correct? Yeah. Same yeah. thing up on yeah. Hawk Mountain, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Still yeah. Rochester. Doesn't matter if it's right here in the town. It's still Rochester. Right, there's like three there's three, three levels. There's three levels of um, fines. So I've sent her the warning stating this is your first warning. The second warning will be your first fine. And and you've sent her a copy of the ordinance. Right, and I sent her a copy, right. And we've been in touch with the state. And did you report anything to the police barracks? Nothing yet, because I wanted to come make sure that you guys all knew yep. where I'm at with this. Yeah. Yeah, because oh, yeah. that is my next step. Yeah. Is the to next go to the state police. Yeah, and next. then from there, it's yes. my lawyer. I've already spoken yeah. with my lawyer. He told me to do exactly what you said. Mm -hmm. So I'm doing exactly what you said. But I wanted to make sure that you guys were all aware of where I'm at with this situation. Because it's every day with these dogs. Mm -hmm. The person you probably need to notifies the Windsor County Sheriff's because that's we, who we use and that's who we're, we're which we did we've which, notified which them before already. and then that's why I was given the guidance to suggest that he go to state the state police, police. yeah mm -hmm. oh, okay yeah yep. so I, I, I yep. I'm, I'm kind of confused because the way I'm understanding it is you guys were given a lawyer's notice that you were harassing and the point being with that being said with the point being, with that being said, if that's all it takes, then why is it that you have a law for a dog to be on a leash? Because if that's harassment, to fulfill what your law here in this town is, well, we're, um, and everybody in here can get their lawyer to send you a letter saying they don't want to pay their taxes because you're harassing yeah. them. Is that or is that not correct? Well, we started the process more formally this okay. Friday. From Friday here, yeah. I want to be in contact from everything you hear or do. Because I'm going to be continually taking pictures of this animal, doing all of its doings. My children shovel up there, they go and get my mail up there. And every day, this dog is nipping at their heels or at their arms. And I'm really sick of it. 
No, I have a five-year-old that if it gets bit in the face like my other one did, mm -hmm. the dog probably won't be still there. Yeah. Because I'm not going to do it anymore. I'm right. sick of it. Don't blame you. And when my yeah. oldest one doesn't even want to walk up there to the playground to hang out with her five-year-old sister, it's pretty sad. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that he came in and here because it's good to hear this because all we've been hearing is um, complaints of harassment from mm -hmm. from her. Well, it's no longer harassment. Yeah, yeah. I am a yeah citizen that is pissed off beyond. Yeah. So we have his contact information to yeah. inform him of any. We do. Can I also just say, and I, you can you're free to call and stop by at any time too. Like it does get bananas in here, and if we, you know, mm -hmm. I just want, I just want to say that, like it's crazy in here well, sometimes. As you know, and if I will. We get an email, as you know, I will, because I've been, you know, that day I came down here because I wanted to know what we were doing. Yeah. And that's when you told me that you've been yeah. in contact, and I yeah. need to contact state police next. So. Yeah. Okay. And, and I I've, I've been in like, contact with the, home, the landowner up there too. They know that's my next step. I'm yeah. going to the state police. Yeah. So he's he's in touch with everything. I've told yeah. him okay. everything up there. Yeah, I have. He doing knows doing every single thing that's going on. Mm -hmm. And okay. we've been in contact and with Brian as, as well. As you guys have all yeah. been given mm -hmm. copies of everything that I've been taking yep. track of. Yep. And this yep. is this That's has right. been since 2022. Okay, there's a dead horse that was taken off of that property. Yeah. Because she doesn't take care of those animals. One of them. Died. And then she now brings back a third one. Mm -hmm. After a third one died. I, this has been since February 20th of this year that my wife and I have called to try to get something taken care of, and that's what we've been given, the runaround. So that's why I'm, I'm a little pissed off about yeah. this whole situation. It sounds like an animal cruelty issue. Yeah. So, it does, yeah. It's fitting the bill. That's where the state police the, the, the horses, mm -hmm. I've seen the, the horses up there in this tiny, tiny little situation. It's, very tiny. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Yes. You can barely move. And what they call shelter for those horses ain't shelter. Mm, yeah. So. Well, don't hesitate to keep us updated on what's going on and vice versa. Yep. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, if you want, I can try to give you the pictures right now of the ones that we just had after I left from here. I got the camera right here just so I can show you the dog running around my car. And I'm not sure if she's even given riding lessons up there where she shouldn't really be doing. But that's not my problem. So if you start right there and you go this way, you will see the dog running around. You can actually go back the other way from there. Also pictures on that camera of it being on the main road, the dirt road up there, biting the ass into the dog, the horse. This is this is an excuse about your daughter's face being bitten. Yeah. That was that was a long time ago, but yes, I do have that. But that was about 13 years ago with my daughter's face. Where was that? He should. Right down the ball field. The ball field. Gracie Lambert. Nicole Lambert was the one here. The you were on the board, and yeah. there was three or two others on yeah. the board. Yeah. Marvin Harvey and somebody mm -hmm. else. Right. <clears throat> so I want it taken care of this yeah. this time. All right. Well, thank you for coming in. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Uh, <coughs> it's John, right? Jonathan Lambert. John Lambert. Nicole Lambert was the one who contacted Jeff Brown. It was my wife. Okay. Um, Can I have his contact information if you guys? Yep. 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 No, I think I do too. From the notes that you said. Yeah. Yep. Yep. You got it. Okay. Yep. Thank All you right. very much. Yep. Thank you. Have a good Thank you. Evening. Good luck. Um, <clears throat> any other um, guests on Zoom that have something to talk about? Doesn't look like everybody's no, still every, muted. Okay. Um, we've got the um, January Treasurer's Report. And, um, 
showing us the budget status and balance sheet and revenues report and expense report and to do and onward into February. So yeah, I've moved we're more to than halfway through. through the year now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Okay. And we have a, um, a rental contract from Pierce Hall offering the town of Rochester free use of Pierce Hall for um, town sponsored events and authorized events and they just um, want us to um, sign their their rental um, contract and, and name them as an insured party for for events that we do but I think that's very um, generous and I'm happy to, to um, um, move that we we execute that. I contract. second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And we can provide them with that insurance document. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. Don't have. Um, Tony on Zoom from the library, so I don't know nope. anything about that. And um, it's been pretty mellow on the highway front, yeah. hasn't it? They, they all went to Florida, did they? No, <laughs> I don't think so. I think they'd like to go. <laughs> yeah, they could have. <laughs> they have, uh, they got their trucks back together anyway, and uh, I'm sure he's looking at posting the roads shortly. And everything's good. Everything's good. Yeah. Quiet. Good. I, was, I have been in touch with uh, uh, Teresa in Bethel, and they have to do another road project <laughs> over there. So they want to do it sometime this summer. Um, so they're going to check with Jay McDonald, who is their contractor that they hired to do the project, and see whether when they can do it and John will probably want to work with them and and put that Rogers Brook culvert in at the same time mm -hmm. while the road's shut down they can't do anything but shut that road down to fix that one below the sergeant trailer park just mm -hmm. as you head down the hill there um, they could only do one at a time over there so they have to do the other one you know this summer so it won't be closed as long <laughs> no it won't be anywhere near like it was but i thought we could possibly work with them and uh, save some money on signage so we'd only have to post this side <laughs> they would be able to post the other side at least yeah. and our project wouldn't take all that long i don't think so I'll keep you posted on that. Okay. Terry, anything on the utilities front? No, uh, I think after the town meeting, we're going to have to revisit the prices. We aren't as in good shape as you might think. We've been, I just had a class on it. And they, on the class, they can't believe we aren't raising it every year. But our rates are nothing compared to most rates. I mean, I can use, they showed one, and it was for Jericho, and they're paying $940 for water. Flat fee for 72 people, for 72 hookups. And that figures out 61,000, which is 20,000 more than we do in our water for for 170. But meanwhile, we're we're paying our bills and we're, we're making. But we aren't fixing anything. Mm -hmm. Fixing it. So what are you going to do? Wait till we got to go get a bond for 100,000 just to get started? To right. me, that's not making any sense at all. I mean, we put this on hold for too many years. Going to be like Middlebury. Oh, yeah. yeah, you're going to be in trouble. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people were out of water over there for a while. And they still got boiled water. Still are. Yep. Mm -hmm. 
So Terry, it sounds like um, you're recommending that we raise the rates and put the extra into a reserve fund for future repairs, is that what Well, saying? we need to start doing some repairs. Oh, we need to start doing some repairs. Yeah, I mean, before, <clears throat> prices aren't going down on them. Yeah. Well, we said when we raised the rates, what, three years ago? Three that, years ago. That we yeah. should review it every so often and see where we're at, and we thought we'd give it a couple, three years anyway to see. This whole class saying we should visit every year and probably raise it a little bit, and that doesn't hurt. Uh, but they're saying most of them all raise it every year. And, you know, you say you raised it three years ago, but you know what, it's 15 years before that. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I know, that's what I'm saying. So realistically, we've raised it once in 20 years. Right. <clears throat> Is there a capital project plan that outlines <laughs> the needs? Um, I did one probably 15 years ago. We had everybody threw it down the toilet. We've been in touch with uh, Two Rivers on the, the what is that, the I met there? Um, and and uh, the the technical it? assistance program. Yeah. yeah, and they're going to work with us on doing another capital plan something that's a little more reasonable than the last one we did mm -hmm. because there's just no way you could ever live up to it. Yeah. Um, so we've been in contact with them and, and they're in the process of, we're getting the ball rolling on it. So, cause you're gonna have to have a capital plan going forward to even get any grants down the road and that's really what the big issue is gonna be. And, and that's right off, you aren't gonna get the grants, you don't have capital plan. Right, right exactly. That's why this class had that. Yep. You and should that, be looking at least 10 years to, out. Have to do that, so. Um, and you is, can't keep putting process. this off. I mean, I'm sorry to, but you know what? It's not fair to bond the repairs on our water system that everybody's got to pay for, not just the users, when the users are getting really a good deal on it anyway. I mean, I showed it last time how many, every town I looked up is probably double what we pay. Well, there is a theory to support the idea of the entire town paying for the water and sewer system. Right. I understand that, but we shouldn't have to just because everybody's getting... I did the theory for what it costs to you for your septic, your water, on a 25-year program that you would last 25 years mm -hmm. and it was double plus the tax bill you get on it it's double of what the town users pay because I, I don't think fundamentally it's realistic that the what, whatever the number of users is you know can realistically support the entire cost of the expensive infrastructure you know, no. that if it's not spread. They should be able to do the maintenance on it. The maintenance, mm -hmm. yes. And that's not happening. Yeah. The maintenance, yeah. I mean, you got a lot of hydrants at 40 years plus. So what is happening with the money that the users pay into we, we are quarterly? Break, we are breaking even. No, we were in until, huh? We weren't even breaking even for we're many years. Deficit. We were so getting kind of we light to on what it was or yeah. not. Really, no one. We were waiting really to see what the yeah. increase was going to do, or yeah. when we raised the rates, and I'm not sure what that it, came it, out to. It's helped some. I mean, we went from like eighty-nine thousand to twenty, in. But we're still in the deficit. Right, we're still in deficit, but we're coming out of it. Right. Yeah. All right. Sounds like we've got a. Right, got everything a else is going up. I, I thought that the, that we could do two fire hydrants a year through grant process was that, is that am I wrong on that? I mean, I, mean, I talked to Rita they, they said there wasn't any money out there for maintenance on for hydrants. for replacing hydrants. I I talked to Rita about that about a year ago, and she these guys didn't know of any. Look look into it. These are all state guys that yeah 
And even then, meeting. it sounds like the grants are going to, one of the requirements is going to be a capital plan. That's so, correct. Yeah. Right, and if we don't have a capital plan, they aren't going to grant any money yeah. on that. Right. So, are they going to check and see if you're following the capital plan? You can have a capital plan. Is it Next thing, following? no way. That's the question, yeah. <laughs> They didn't say that. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. you're going to show on your capital plan, you're going to show where you got Progress, to raise yeah. it. So if you aren't, yeah. they can look that up. If you haven't raised your rates at all, then yeah. you probably aren't going to get any money. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. There'll be something to work on in, into the spring, huh? Yeah. Okay. Um, Jeff is probably not there. I spoke with him today. Yeah. <clears throat> he went through and, and checked all these lights in here, and he's wants to move forward looking at replacing these with LEDs, LEDs, and figures that he didn't have all the numbers. He was kind of laid up, so. Um, but he said the payback will be a, a short pay, payback mm -hmm. period, so. Um, we'll have to look into it a little more with him, and, and um, I've got some stuff I've got to do with him to get him caught up. So and that's on me. So I'll take care of that. Kristen, got any update on grants? Nope, it's been a little bit quiet. A little bit quiet. I'm still waiting yeah. for FEMA. I do the properties that um, were inspected by. The USDA NRCS, which is Natural Resources Conservation Service, um, for uh, watershed and river riverbed protection, um, two two properties were investigated. One property qualified for a program, and um, the program typically has the homeowner uh, provide 25% of the cost. And the homeowner that was selected for a project to restore a bank, a sand bank that's, that's eroding down mm -hmm. into a river uh, stream, um, would have been obligated to pay $45,000. Um, the uh, program went back due to the lot of the flooding that happened all around the whole state. Um, they went back to the government and they now have 100%. All right funding for it. So the homeowner does not have to match that $45,000. Um, so um, that program for that one homeowner is moving forward with engineering and then it'll go out to bids for actual work to be done, hopefully, in the next 12 months. And, and that'll have to be run through the town, right? Yes. That, that's correct. Yes. Like we did with Dean Mendel. Yes. Similar, same yes. program, right? Yep. So we'll just be handling the paperwork on that. Yep. And that's all. It won't be any cost other than that. that there's, there's a lot of money for that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. A lot. Flood. flood yeah, this uh, is a $200,000 project. Yeah. I, I think I saw somewhere there's $100 million in a fund, and then somebody said, yeah, you'd be surprised how fast that will go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. And this program is, is protecting the rivers. Um, they basically. Did I say 100? I meant 100 million. The way they put it is they really don't care about your house. They just don't want your house in their river. Fair so enough. they're protecting the river. <laughs> Speaking of um, things sitting around that could fall into the river, Larry, you mentioned that you might have some interest in looking into this little hot spot solar array that got plopped in our our yard i i would i would love to see that functioning yeah. <laughs> yes it'd be interesting to see there's a big yeah. old lock on it youtube says <coughs> to take two spoons and open it but i <laughs> i spoke with the guy that manages those Oh, you did? Yes, oh. and I, I think I might still have his number, but he was supposed to come and take it down. Take the whole thing away? Yeah, because it's obsolete. He said there's four or five of them working in the state. Okay. And he said this one here is not working. And he said the panels are about used up, for one thing. 
and that he would use the parts on the other ones that are around the state, but he hasn't come back since, so he knows it's not working. So the pedals were installed in 2011. They're officially rated for 20 years. Well, these might not be the same. He's, and also Tom Schnabel looked at it too. Oh, oh Tom Schnabel, okay. Yeah, so he, and he said that there's not much life left of those panels. But I, I don't know anything about it other than what Tom had told me. So, well, I, I have some panels that are same same age. Yeah. But um, this <clears throat> they're still producing like the Dickens. Yeah. Um, you know, I have, just have to say. But I, it, I think I think for what they guarantee what they guarantee and say it should be. I, I think in general we tend to do better. Maybe we because we have less sun than other places. I don't know. Yeah. And it I'm not sure, sure, but I think when we put that generator in, there were some issues with that connecting to the building at the same time. But I'm not sure. But is the issue just the the, the panels working or the whole interconnect? Of I don't the know. System? I mean, I was very upset. I mean, first of all, I was thrilled when we were chosen to get it installed right. at zero cost. Right. Um, because it created. A, a link, you know, in, during a total failure, mm -hmm. a, a communications link during a, a total failure like we had in Irene. Right. Um, and then to have the whole system just collapse yeah. uh, pretty quickly, um, you know, was very disappointing. It, yeah, it's it's not a very big circuit anyway. I mean, I, you know, it's very but, small. Yeah, so, so I, don't I don't know. I, don't I mean, know. If it's, you know, if the issue is completely just the life of the panels that are, you know, creating the power source, mm -hmm. but there's all the, the whole interconnect to, you know, to the cell system. I, I mean, I, yeah. way beyond my under, yeah. no yeah, knowledge, too. But, uh, <laughs> but it really is a shame all the money that got spent, yeah. uh, you know, to get these things up and running, and then it it just died. Yeah, I know. Agree. Yeah. I agree with you. I brought a friend down from Menden who's a retired electrical engineer specializing in communications equipment. Right there, you go. And he said he'd be ha if I can. He says if you can break me in, if you can break into it, I'll be happy to take a look at it, do some testing, and evaluate <laughs> it. See, see, see what. I'll have to if look you need and see. Opinion. I still got that like guy's it. number, and I'll call him. He's he's in New York. It's, he's out. He's out of state. Possessions nine tenths of the law. Right? Yeah. Well, the, Look, it's, it's not, not working, owned, owned I, by us. I saw. It. Well, who owns it? It's a has something to do with the state. It's. it's yeah. I don't know. It's a weird. State. Is it a grant? It's a. It's a it was done through. A, yeah, the yeah. grant system. Oh, yeah. And then it was. It was the, the company. The company went under. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Take the money and run. After they got paid yeah, for putting all those things up. But I, I happened to look over once, just in time to see uh, the guy mowing the lawn put his head right into the corner of one of those solar panels. And um, if it's not going to work, we should get rid of it. <laughs> yeah. It's really. Well, I, I would. I would like. Is it? Did you have anybody have the key to that thing? No. Did you have? No. Did you break open into it? No, because we don't own it. Somebody yeah. else owns yeah. it. <laughs> oh, okay, so if I take some like liquid nitrogen and somehow get two spoons and yeah. I don't know anything about that. <laughs> get a big set of so so what, 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 what was the question? Uh, Fred, maybe you can answer this. Um, at one point there was a uh, a weak Verizon signal that came from School Street. A, a cell signal? Who's was that coming from that unit? The local town. Yeah. Towns to Those were on telephone poles, right? <laughs> Those Verizon <laughs> things? We don't yeah. even have one. And yes, that, they, that okay. Dylan there went was, out of business as well. Oh, yes. Yeah, they, there was a time where <laughs> he's they doing were other things. trying he's got his to badge. do that. Mm -hmm. put, put small, you know, services on, on the poles so they had a system of it, but yeah. they found it was just too complicated to and too costly to do it. They had to have too many through the, you know, because they w wouldn't range far enough. And, yeah. With that particular system. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah that system I mean, I, I, I see a lot too. of visitors yeah. suffering because they come up here with Verizon phones. Everybody's got good ideas. We just yeah. wander yeah, around. Yeah, we're having that stuff. problem with people that have Verizon phones at the charging station. They yeah. can't. They can't get their oh, they car can't charged get on their yeah, Verizon right. service. <laughs> yes. So they, Put a post-it note on it or something that they can go up to the library and download on the internet and come back and charge in their car. Well, is the new cell tower going to make a difference there? If 
if it's not going to be Verizon, no. The one in. <laughs> well, maybe there's a piece of equipment that can convert it to a, a, a Wi Fi signal. Yeah. Flow. 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 Oh, Charlie. Anything else anybody oh, wants nice. to speak about tonight? Then, uh, Zoom up your zappy. Thank everyone for coming and all your input, and um, we'll move forward and on to next Monday. On next to next week. Monday. Yep. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's move to adjourn. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.